to the Podunk Polymath, a podcast dedicated to sentiments of a secular, sarcastic, screwed up Southernist JW and skeptic. I'm your host, Chris. Come on in. This is episode 68 of the Podunk Polymath podcast. Hope you all had a spectacular weekend. Uh, the government is shut down. So that's great. Um, I'm sure you all know that already. Uh, let's just go ahead and clarify the Republicans control the Senate, the Repub- uh, the House of Representatives, and the presidency, but yet somehow they can't come into agreement. So they're going to blame us. Well, not us, but the Democrats. You know what I mean. Of course, the reason they're holding it up, the Democrats, is because of DACA. They want a clean bill on DACA. Which, you know, we don't want, they don't want brown people to come in, so I guess that's fine if you screw them over, the Republicans. And of course, that's the main driver behind this, is they want that clean bill. Republicans have refused to provide that. Of course, there was a deal that supposedly was on the table between Schumer and the president about giving funds for the border wall in exchange for a DACA, but that didn't happen. So, here we are in an impasse, and it's awesome, you know. Oh, the military isn't getting paid, which is awesome. In fact, the Republican, I mean the Democrats, try to actually pass a motion to give them their pay during even during the, the shutdown. Mitch McConnell refused to let it come to the floor of the Senate. So that goes in. Go ahead and it puts to rest the lie that they give a fuck about the military unless it's to use them as a a ploy as a prop for patriotism or whatever they don't really give a fuck so i wanted to read one of the quotes here now tammy duckworth is a representative a democrat from the state of illinois <laughs> It's pretty funny when she said it. Oh, she's a senator. My my apologies. Senator Duckworth from Illinois called him a five deferment draft dodger. And I'll go ahead and read the whole quote. Does he even know that there are service members who are in harm's way right now, watching him looking for their commander in chief to show leadership rather than try to fuck blame or that his own Pentagon says that the short term funding plans he seems intent on pushing is actually harmful to not just the military, but to our national security. I spent my entire adult life looking out for the well-being, the training, the equipping of the troops for whom I was responsible. Sadly, this is something that the current occupant of the Oval Office does not seem to care about to do, care to do, and I will not be lectured about what our military needs by a five deferment draft dodger. And I have a message for Cadet Bone Spurs. If you cared about our military, you'd stop baiting Kim Jong Un into a war that could put 85,000 American troops and millions of innocent civilians in danger. Oh, and she uh, lost both of, the, both of her legs in a rocket RPG uh, attack on her helicopter. Uh, and she's a lieutenant colonel, so she's got a little bit of, you know, a little bit of uh, a weight goes behind that statement. So, Trump is a piece of shit. I mean, I, I don't need to tell you all that, but this is a new level, and it's not just the Republicans, too. I mean, they just... You, you ask yourself... Really? I mean, is it is kicking out brown people and not paying the military more important than, I don't know, I just, is it worth shutting the government down over? You know, there are people who aren't getting paid, federal contractors, employees, the military, you know, government service, GS people, whatever. So, yeah, that's awesome. Just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, it just keeps getting worse. So, uh, you know, very, very heartwarming. Awesome stuff. Uh, a little bit something more positive. The Women's March took place uh, this weekend, and a lot of turnout. Even here in Nashville, there was 15,000 that showed up. And it was a big show of force, not only for you know women's rights, which are, of course, being put in danger by the Republicans and Trumpster, but also it was an anti-Trump rally. Uh, there were some funny signs out there. I'm sure most of y'all have seen them already. And there was a lot of, you know, anger. Uh, which there shouldn't be. I mean, if you give a fuck at all about women's rights and uh, people's rights in general, especially uh, the LGBT rights, which apparently there is now a Religious Freedom Act, so-called, that has been put into effect where people, doctors and such, can refuse service based upon their religious uh, teachings, which basically means they get to, you know, not give treatment to gay people or re- reassignment sexual reassignment surgery which i don't if you weren't going to do that anyway you're not going to be you know 
they're very specialized doctors. So you wouldn't, they wouldn't be doing it anyway, regardless. It's not like you just, Oh, by the way, I'm going to do that. So that's not, you know, uh, as bad, but it's, I'm more worried about like frontline people who are ER people or something who it's a life or death situation. And they see some, you know, gay person or trans person or something comes in and well, I can't treat them because you know, they're who they are because of my religious convictions and they let that person die. So yeah, that's, I, I know you're thinking, well, I wouldn't, you're being, you know, you're being alarmist. Well, I don't know. Am I, I don't trust in, there's no telling. I mean, all this shit that's happened so far, there's just no telling what the fuck's going to happen with this guy. And people are emboldened. These, these bigots and intolerant fuckwads are becoming emboldened by this asshole becoming president. So there's no telling what kind of shit's going to go down. So I'm just going to tell you all right now, be on the lookouts for some shit you didn't think was going to happen and don't put anything past him or his cronies. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> for the palaver this week, I have with me, Rob Ray, co-host with his wife of the soon to be retired secular yakking podcast, which I was a patron of, and I'm kind of sad about, but also to be more positive, he is the leader or well, president founder of the original mono project. And he's going to be ramping that back up again. We talk about that kind of how it began the struggles, but what he's going to do to kind of reinvigorate it. So it's exciting. If you are into not having any guy we trust as our fucking motto in the state of pluribus unum, which it was originally before Eisenhower passed, that it would be in God we trust in the fifties. So anyway, great conversation told me some shit. I didn't even know about, uh, I thought I knew more than I actually did, which is not surprising, but I think y'all enjoy. It's very fascinating and instructive conversation. Now on to the palaver. Welcome to secular soup. I'm Amy with a Y and I'm Amy with an I and we're just two blueberries floating in a bowl of tomato soup. Stay tuned for real talk about atheism, feminism, politics, parenting and whatever the fuck else we want to talk about because this is our show and get ready for a whole lot of motherfucking profanity. Buckle up bitches. It's time to have some soup. I would tell them they can find us wherever podcasts are, but they're listening to this right now. So if you're that so stupid that you're listening us. to this show and you don't if know where to listen. If we have to tell you how to find podcasts then you're hopeless. Has In God We Trust invaded your town? Are you tired of government officials who want to plaster In God We Trust on taxpayer-owned property? Are you afraid because your local chef placed an In God We Trust decal on the patrol cars? We are here to help. The original motto project is for those who feel the separation of church and state is an important issue and should be honored regardless of your belief or lack thereof. Theists, non-theists, and all free thinkers are welcome. We need your support to show politicians that diversity exists within our nation and their promotion of a monotheistic religion and push for theocracy will not be tolerated. Stand up and be heard. Join us at Original Model. Dot US. Welcome to another edition of the Palaver here in the Podunk Polymath Podcast. This week I have with me someone I've had on before. Uh, he's going to talk a little bit about his retiring his podcast, which I'm not sure why, but he'll tell you. And he's also the main man behind the Ritual Model Project. So if you'll uh, welcome with me, uh, Rob Ray. How's it going, Rob? Oh, it's going great. Well, pretty good. I've been better. You know, and, uh, run the gamut here. Yeah, don't lie. Just, you know, if, you, if you're if you sucking, just say, you know, <laughs> it's all good. Life can be shitty, so, you know. That it can. First of all, as I said, you were on with your wife, Amy, on, I forgot what episode number it is, because you think I had to look beforehand, but I didn't. I'm not a very good podcaster today. But I had y'all on, and you had me on y'all's show, and we talked about various subjects. I think on our show, we talked kind of more of the social justice warrior stuff. Yep. So th I really enjoyed that conversation. I enjoyed coming on y'all's show as well. But you say you're retiring the show. You want to like give a little reasoning behind that? Yeah, I guess I could. Um, I haven't talked a, a lot about this in public, so I guess um, it'll, it'll work on this show. Um, not uh, a few months ago, I had knee surgery, and um, I, I took a few weeks off from podcasting. And when I came back, it just didn't feel the same. You know, 
And um, that I, I think I got to a point where it it was no longer a passion. It, it felt more like a job, right? I understand. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> and and uh, we we kept going through the motions, and I noticed that the the show quality kept going down and down and down, and I couldn't. Um, I wasn't spending as much time as I wanted to. And then it turned out I can't spend as much time as I wanted to because we're having some changes in life. And uh, there's a lot of stuff going on around now um, that we felt that, you know, in the interest of having a good show and, and leaving with a good show, that now is the best time for us to exit. Well, that's, you know, that's completely understandable. I guess I should have asked you ahead of time if you wanted to go in depth about it. I didn't realize you. I had seen the post and you really hadn't said completely why, obviously. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, things happen and I can understand that, you know, it becomes, and I go through that at times, uh, honestly, because I don't know. I got two jobs and so, you know, and sometimes I get, I have depressive episodes and shit. We won't get too much into that, but yeah, I can under, definitely understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I, well, a lot of people that listen to the show know that I get a lot of overtime at work. Right. And, um, like the past two weeks I did 140 hours. Jesus. So, uh, the past two weeks I've had zero time for show prep. And like last week's show was just kind of, th- put together in the past couple hours and i think it showed um and and that's been part of the problem and that that overtime is not changing anytime soon so um i like i said i just don't have time to put out the quality show i want and i think i owe it it to our fans to put out a quality show so i completely understand and i well was a patron am a patron whatever you want to say and so you know I, i'm sad to see you go but i mean i enjoy all the shit stuff you've put out already i would say shit good stuff <laughs> i was using shit in a general term not <laughs> right <laughs> uh, all the stuff y'all put out and you know we still got that to listen to but of course you haven't given up your main passion let's talk a little bit about that i don't think we talked about a whole lot when i had you on the first time but it's the original motto project. Yeah. You, that's, that's your passion, wouldn't you say? Oh, yeah. That, that is my true passion. Um, I'm an activist at heart. Uh, it's, what, it's what brought me around to the atheist and secular community was that activism um, bone, I guess. Uh, uh, prior to becoming a secular activist, I was kind of floating in the middle of nowhere. I had no drive. I was just, just there, just going through the motions of being alive right and then i found secular activism like okay i think i found what i want to do kind of like it gave my life meaning kind of weird to say it in that terms but that's kind of what it felt like like a calling and um and one of the things that i came across over the past couple of years is that um a lot of people will fall back on the national motto of in god we trust as a reasoning for um inserting more christianity into government yeah, it turns out that I have a knack for government and laws for some reason. So I started to concentrate on that. And that's what I found out. And I realized that there was nobody else fighting in God We Trust. Uh, not seriously. I mean, Michael Newdow does occasionally. But nothing seriously on the books. So um, I, I did a couple things. Uh, you know, I posed it at a council meeting here in Clark County in Washington. And uh, I, I think that's when it started because I really got in depth with that discussion with that council. And I was like, there's got to be something we can do. This is ridiculous. So that was kind of how it started. Yeah. Why don't you go ahead a little more in depth about the, how it started? I'm sure. So, you know, Clark County, like I said, Clark County was kind of a catalyst, but what really got it started was uh, when I gave the invocation down in uh, Olympia and Sam Mulvey from Ask an Atheist came down to see the invocation. And I got to talking to him about In God We Trust, because we'd we'd worked together in Clark County and Pierce County. And um, he said, well, maybe, you know, the the national situation is not necessarily the way to go. And so I had a nice long two and a half hour drive home. And I started thinking about it. And I said, yeah, you know, he's right. Maybe we need to fight these at every individual council that they come up. And so I, I created an idea that any city council that proposes putting a God we trust up, I would write them letters and offer to um, provide e pluribus unum as well, or instead of. 
uh, it being the original national motto. So that's kind of where the, the name came out as well, the original motto project. Uh, it's, it's literally a project to restore the original motto of the United States. Yeah, it was <laughs> you ain't got you're preaching the choir on that, I'm sure. Oh yeah. Uh for for a clarity's sake, you say Clark County and Olympia. Why don't you tell everybody where you where you're talking about? Oh yeah, I'm currently based in Washington State, way out here in the middle of uh left country. Okay. I just wanted to I th- I thought so, but I just wanted to make everybody cuz now everybody's familiar with the, the right. geography of the, you know, that area of the country and all the fucking lefties, you know. <laughs> um so yeah, you started out trying to get these letters out. Uh, why don't you give some example? I mean, when you started out, was it how many did you like say put out uh, each? Well, I don't know, week or something. How how busy were you? Well, when I first started out, it was um, an interesting time. Um, I would probably find two or three councils a week, and I would send them letters uh, for the first six months or so. And um, you know, I I got. Varied response. Usually I was ignored. Um, there's a story on a website about Del Norte County, California, which is sort of our first win and really my first true interaction with uh, a council member outside of my local area. And that's an interesting story in itself uh, with uh, the the way he and I interacted with each other. I suggest you go read it because it's a lot more in depth than I can get into here. Uh, let's see. But, you know, like I said, probably two, three, sometimes four a week. And then something in the summer of, uh, where are we at, 17? Uh, Summer 2015 happened. One of my nemesis, I I guess that's the right word. Nemesis? Nemesis, which is in God We Trust America Incorporated, managed to get some uh, sheriff's departments uh, to put it on their police cars, on on their patrol cars. And, And then suddenly this thing just took off. Uh, and God We Trust was going up on three, four sheriff and police departments a day for months at a time. And it got, it was pretty intense there for a while because I would send them letters. And one of the things that we did is uh, they would inevitably post a picture of their new patrol car on their Facebook page. And that's when the, um, I, I guess our uh, slacktivism kicked in because uh, a lot of the the members who had been supporting the original model project, we'd, we'd amassed quite a good Facebook following. They would go into these pages of the councils or the um, the police departments and just give them literal hell for putting this thing on their vehicles. Hmm. So how did that work? <laughs> I mean, how, how, how well did that work? Let's just say that. Uh, let's, we had, again, varied responses. Um, we uh, would... Sometimes we would just get ignored, right? Uh, but the citizens of the area would really fire back at us, and that we would get into these long discussions and debates and uh, about you know separation of church and state and about the motto. And there was a lot of education going back and forth. Um, I, I got to say that occasionally we would change the mind of a citizen, but we never was able to change the mind of a sheriff or a police department. Sadly. Mm. In fact, uh, a number of us ended up getting banned from uh, these Facebook pages. Oh, well, that's unsurprising. <laughs> yeah. And um, originally, we really fought hard against getting banned. I mean, we would, I wrote um, letters and placed a, a Freedom of Information Act request about to several sheriff departments about, you know, who's on your banned list and, you know, who lives in your district that's on your banned list and all this stuff. So we're tr- real trying really, really hard to make a case of that. Because we felt that was an infringement of our First Amendment rights. You know, we're we're there as constituents or citizens talking to our government. We shouldn't be silenced for just disagreeing with them. And a lot of times that's all it was. We would disagree enough and they would finally just get tired of it and ban us. Hmm. Yeah, again, unsurprising. Um, <laughs> what were your some of your... Okay, so you said you had some, you had some losses. Have you had victories? I'm sure you have. What are some of your victories? Well, like I said, Del Norte County is a victory because we were able to get you player with Unum up there. Uh, we had, I'd, I'd have to go back to my list. We've had six victories so far. Pierce County, we counted as a victory because we got you player with Unum up there. One of our first victories. Uh, that happened even before the project happened. Um, then we had, I want to say Venice Beach, California. And then we had two in Florida and all these... Uh, were 
to put up Eplorbus Unum along with it. And then we had one other in um, somewhere in Florida. I don't remember the exact place where they decided not to even put up in God We Trust after we contacted them. I'd have to get those off the website. They're there somewhere. Hmm. So what did you do? You just wrote them letters? Did you have any local buy-in or anything? Any local members? Uh, usually, so a lot of times I would, um, the first thing I would do when I found out about the police department or city council or whatever, I would go either through Facebook or Meetup and find the most local uh, secular community. And I would let them know what's going on because a lot of times they don't know, especially if it's a county or city council. A lot of people don't follow the agendas of their local councils. And so since I had the Google News Alert, usually I would get those. Sometimes a day in advance, sometimes the day after. You know, um, time was tight on those because I would get them so close to the event. So I, I tried to involve as many local groups as possible, which um, got me into contact with a lot of locals in a lot of different areas. I mean, I now have um, a, a ton of friends in those areas where um, this is in God We Trust is the heaviest, like Missouri and Florida and Alabama and uh, Mississippi. I've got a ton of people that I, I can contact now because I've made those initial contacts. So it really worked out well for that. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I'm glad you were able to get at least some traction on that. I mean, I know, of course, I live in the South and the shit's everywhere, you know. And oh yeah, you Tennessee has some of the worst records on that. Um, yeah. Do you have any <laughs> any experiences for my great state? I'm sure you do. Oh, I'm sure I do. Um, let me let me think. I know we've got a bunch of county sheriffs in your state, and we got a ton of uh, county councils uh, from your state. Now, I remember not, uh, well, I'll say not too long ago, it's been a couple of years, there was a county, I forgot what county it was, and there was actually a member of the council who tried to get it stopped, and he, I can't remember which county it was, because they were trying to put In God We Trust on, like, the courthouse, inside the courthouse or something, and he was against it. I don't even think he was an atheist. I I do know he got, of course, he got a lot of fucking flack from the community. A lot of people don't realize they get death threats and shit for this sort of thing. Oh, yeah, they do. Um, I've, I've gotten my share of death threats. Um, most of them I just let them roll off because they're from the middle of nowhere, Mississippi. And, you know, I'm way up here, probably not going to come after me. So I don't consider most of them credible. Uh, but the guys in their areas getting death threats from their constituents, that's a different story altogether. Yeah, there is somebody down here who's with FFRF East Tennessee chapter. <laughs> she is Alita Lindecker. I'm going to go ahead and name her now because she's a fucking badass. I'm going to go ahead and tell you. Oh, yeah, she is. Yeah. She doesn't, she doesn't, <laughs> she's no, you know, uh, what are you, trooping Lily or whatever you can probably use <laughs> the wrong term. But anyway, uh, yeah, she on frequently calls people out at the, uh, the her particular county courthouse i think the most recent one was a, a, a worker who was working inside the building the courthouse or the county building or something she had like some religious stuff on her uh her little cubicle and you could see it through a window the public could see it and she was trying to get that taken down and then she had there was a nativity scene i believe outside um state pro uh county property so Right. And she's done this for several different things. So that's a little off topic, I guess, but I just. Yeah. she <laughs> She's also one of those people that I met through the original motto project, uh, just simply by reaching out to the local groups. And uh, she's one of those that really uh, makes an impact out there. So, yeah. Uh, glad to know her. Yeah. She's in the thick of it. Like I said, e oh, yeah. East Tennessee is not, <laughs> is not friendly territory uh, for atheist or shit anything that's not Prot <laughs> protestantism pretty much uh so i i know a bit about that i actually went to a free thought a little mini conference out there and met her not too long about a year or two ago and yeah she was pretty cool but it's yeah the east tennessee actually has a more active atheist community out there than they do here in nashville which it it always seems like the areas that are most embattled are the ones that have kind of the strongest presence, right. I guess, because they feel like they need to band together, you know, because. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, uh, there's a lot going on here in the South that's less than great. So let's just say that. Yeah. I, yeah. We fought um, a bit of a battle with your legislature about two years ago 
uh, maybe last year, uh, regarding some uh, diversity funding being reallocated to providing God We Trust bumper stickers to one of the local police departments from the university. Oh, yeah. Now I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. They had a diversity council or something at UT, University of Tennessee. And the legislator didn't like that because, because something like uh, they were funding some harm. Oh, it was sex education or something for the, yeah. for the students or some something that would actually help, you know? Oh, God, they threw a fit because you know, those, you know, let's just say that the, the Tennessee legislature has a super majority of Republicans. Oh, yeah. So they can't, I mean, anything they say goes pretty much. We got Democrats got nothing, which they need to fight harder, in my opinion. But anyway, so yeah, they pulled money out of that program. Well, they pulled any state funding. I think they, they rallied and got private funding. So I think it's still going on. But, uh, yeah, they pulled state funding, but I didn't know that they reallocated it to that. Yeah, that was the original plan was to reallocate it for uh, statewide bumper stickers for police and the sheriff department. Which is how I got involved in it. Yeah, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Because I had no idea about it. But this is very interesting. It's the first time I've heard that. Um, I, I, like I said, it's been a while. But yeah, that was the original bill was to reallocate it. Um, but I think the bill got changed. Uh, and I don't remember. I know that they changed their mind and decided not to go with the bumper stickers. Uh, and for some reason, there's this idea that if it's government funded, then they can't do it. But if it's privately funded, they think it's still okay. And um, we see that a lot. So, like, a bumper sticker is going to the sheriff's department, and it's donated. And they're like, well, we didn't spend any money on it, so there's no no um, crossing of the line of separation church-state. Like, you don't get the line. That We don't care about the money. We care about the message. So, it, it's an interesting conversation when you get into that point on, on it. But I think, uh, I'm pretty sure that bill died somewhere as part of that. I'd have to look it back up. Yeah, I'm kind of looking right now i don't think they actually did anything about it. i mean they it, it passed i don't know if bredesen or not bredesen haslam yeah he didn't he didn't actually uh hold on let me read this right quick uh bill haslam allowed the bill that diverts about four hundred forty five thousand eight hundred eighty two dollars from the ut's office for diversity and inclusion to minority engineers scholarships to become law without his signature his office announced friday uh that's not originally what it was supposed to be for like you said uh i hadn't heard about the bumper sticker thing because i think i stopped following it because i was just so disgusted after i found out that diversity people uh were finding private funding for it yeah so i didn't really want to be honest i didn't want to hear any more about it because i knew it was going to be some bullshit but i think it's cool that it, they p actually didn't put bumper stickers, and I would like to think a little pressure from guys like you know organizations like yours had something to do with that. Right. Yeah, I, I found a little article on it. It said um, Van Hughes estimates that the move would free up about a hundred thousand dollars that could be spent on university designing, printing, and shipping of In God We Trust stickers. Law enforcement agencies around the state could order one decal per vehicle. So that was the original. Yeah. Why don't you send me that uh, that link later if you don't mind. Sure will. Um, so, yeah, but I'm glad to see that in the end, uh, something decent actually came out of it, even though it's still bullshit, yeah. bullshit to begin with, obviously. Yeah, I agree. So, what are the, the states, can you tell me what states you're, more, you're most active in? Uh, sure. Uh, um, mostly the, the southeast. Oh, what? I'm, I'm shocked. Yeah, I know. Weird. Um, yeah, I've got a map um, on our website, and you can see this map in it. Uh, it's right now it's just a map of the sheriff and police departments and you can barely make out the states in the southeast because they're so covered up with little badges and then the rest of the country has like seven little badges and i have almost 350 uh different uh badges on it it's it's insane how many are in the southern states uh specifically in like missouri uh texas uh, missouri i think is the worst one uh, they were one of the first ones to get them, and then the Missouri Sheriff's Association, in one of their meetings, suggested that all sheriff's departments should have them. <laughs> so, I was like, oh man, are you kidding me? How can I fight the entire sheriff's association? You can't. It's, no. So, <laughs> you can't. It's, it's like Missouri is just covered up in badges. Oh boy. Do you have any estimates how many sheriff's departments have these sort of things? Well, my last count, and I, I haven't 
updated my counts. I still have a bunch um, to put on the list. But like I said, we're somewhere around 350 in the entire United States. Hmm. I guess it's not horrible. Well, <laughs> I mean, it's kind of. I mean, but like I said, almost all of them are in the same general area. They're all in the southeast. Yeah, I well, again, absolutely no surprise there, considering how prevalent religion is. Well, quote unquote right. religion. Uh, it, <laughs> I right. not many people act very godly down here when you when you start questioning their religion. So, right now, if you get into city and county councils that have it on their walls or have placed it on inside the, over the dais or something like that, we're well over a thousand. Oh yeah, I've heard plenty of instances of where that's been done before. Yeah. Do y'all ever work with like uh, FFRF or any organizations like that? Um, we have. So, because we're such a small organization, we don't get a whole lot of a lot of press and a lot of attention from the larger groups. Um, yeah, we we talked back and forth. Um, I've shared a couple ideas with like Andrew Seidel. But um, as far as directly working with them, we don't because we're on two different missions. Okay. I mean, we, we, we have a similar goal, but we have um, different ideas on where that mission lies. Um, I get a lot of uh, stuff from the atheist community saying, well, your, your particular cause is, is, is a niche cause and it's small and it's not really going to make much of a difference. Right. And that's fine. For for your opinion, it doesn't work for my opinion because I I honestly think this is at the root of all other uh, church state separation issues. But that's just me. <laughs> yeah, their goal is just to get rid rid of it entirely, isn't it? I think. Um. Yeah. Well, they want to keep church state separate, which I want to keep church state separate. It's just our 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 manner of going about it is just slightly different. I mean, they have actual lawyers. I don't have an on staff lawyer. I mean, I don't actually have a staff, so <laughs> it makes a big difference. I mean, I've got a couple people who work with me. I've got a part-time writer, but, you know, we're all volunteers. None of us get paid to do this. Okay, yeah. I mean, golly. I, I, how much uh, work do you put into this project? Um, there for a long time. I was probably, this was like a second job uh, for about a year. I was putting 30 to 40 hours a week into it uh, between the research and the writing letters and the the updating and keeping everybody uh, apprised of where this one was and how was the best way to uh, approach this one. And it, it became like a second job for a long, long time. Um, and then uh, sometime late last year, everything started slowing down and I'm like, okay, this is something I can handle. And, you know, it's been uh, kind of slow ever since. Hmm. Okay. So why don't you get, walk me through kind of a typical process for you finding a, a a violation or whatever and what you do okay so um usually I'll, it'll come through my google alert or one of my twitter search alerts or something like that you know i've got tons of little search alerts out there because otherwise you can't find anything um and one of the first things i do is i go ahead and take our draft letter and i modify it to fit the situation that we're doing and i look up the um address of whichever government organization we're dealing with i'm looking for email addresses and physical addresses and i will send them an email like with the entire city council i'll send it to the entire city council and if it came through say on a newspaper i'll go ahead and carbon copy whatever reporter was on that newspaper so that they get it too and then um then they'll still get the physical letter in most cases and uh, then i let the people on Facebook and all our social media followers know, you know, this is going on. Let's contact them. Let's get the, the local groups involved and I'll go and contact the local group and make sure they know I'm, what I'm doing. And then, then it just kind of takes off from there. And usually there's some, some back and forth between citizens and our comment section. And that's, um, and then they have a vote and we usually lose. That's how it goes. <laughs> well, that's depressing. I mean, what kind of percentage? I mean, I know it's not high, but do you know pr approximately what percentage of you doing that versus how many wins you actually get? Um, like I said, we've uh, I've, I've sent out well over three hundred letters, or maybe four hundred letters, and you know, like I said, we've had five wins, so pretty low percentage. So don't you get discouraged? Oh, absolutely. Um, there for a, a little while, um, 
I, I considered just shutting the whole thing down. And um, if it weren't for Tom uh, talking me out of it, it probably would have. Uh, Tom is my head writer, and um, he's my, what, what was his title? He's basically my second command, right? Uh, he was on the show for a little while on Secular Yacking. He was my co-host for a little while there, too. And um, if it weren't for him talking me down, uh, we probably wouldn't have one today. Hmm. Yeah. What was his argument? I mean, <laughs> well, my my concept was there was there was a long time where we had just lost and lost and lost and lost and just kept losing, right? And I was getting so depressed. I'm like, am I really making a difference here? And he came back and said, you know, look at all these people that you have got commenting on these things that they would have never even known about or never even cared about before, right? Because who cared about the motto, right? No one. And he said, you've got thousands and thousands of people that are willing to back you up on this particular issue. And if you drop out now, no one will ever pick it up again. And and that that's kind of how he got me to stay in. You say thousands and thousands. I mean, online, on social media or what? Yeah, we've got... um. Between, we, we probably have close to 6,000 on Facebook. We got, um, we, we're inching on 1,000 on Twitter, but, you know, Twitter's a little different. Uh, and plus, we, we, there for a long time, we were getting hundreds and hundreds of hit every day on our website. So, um, we, we had quite a following. We still do have quite a following. But, you know, it, it's, with it slowing down, it's no longer on everybody's radar. You say slowing down. What do you mean exactly? Um, the rate at which we were getting uh, reports has slowed down. Uh, it seems like this was a, a fad that was going around for about two years on the sheriff departments. And, and it hasn't, I haven't seen nearly the level um, since last year. Where do these report? where do you get these reports from? Um, usually I would get them from, like, like I said, I, I have Google search and I search the news. So you'll get them from a local news reporter. You know, the, the. The local Herald Tribune will do a story about how Sheriff What's His Name has added in God We Trust stickers to his bumper stickers, and everybody's happy about it, right? So, um, I, so I, I, I go in and I say, well, not everybody's happy, and and that's that's what we do. Yeah, L- like you said, I've heard shit at least a couple times around here in Tennessee where you know the sheriffs been putting bumper stickers on there. And I get pissed off every f- and yeah, like, oh, everybody's so happy, you know, thank God the Lord is protecting our cars, you know. Yeah. I mean, so, Jesus Christ, seriously. So, a gen- uh, yeah, general argument to the Lord's protecting our cars is, so, no guns and bulletproof vest. Great. Save money. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Or let God, uh, uh, let God take the wheel, or whatever. Yeah, pretty much. And we've, I've seen that used so many times, and people get pissed off when you use that one. Oh, well. Yeah, fuck them. I, 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 I don't care. I mean, it'd be one thing if it, if it's your own personal, you know, whatever, religion, that's fine. But when you start bringing it into, like, government, governmental organizations or whatever, yeah, no. You you deserve to get made fun of as far as I'm concerned. Any, any yeah. means necessary, well, other than, you know, violence or whatever. But, I mean, <laughs> any legal means necessary in order, to get, right. in order to get that shit taken care of because. Yeah. I mean, it really is. In Tennessee, it's, I want to say it's not as bad in some areas, but in others, it is pretty bad. Uh, It's kind of a weird state. It's it's a southern state, but it's not as bad as like, you know, Mississippi and uh, Alabama. Jesus, those places, you know, just. You you know, what's interesting is I'm sitting here looking at my map online. And um, if I look at Tennessee, uh, Nashville's kind of in the middle-ish, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. There, there's there's none within hundreds, I don't know, I, I, the size is kind of weird, but there's miles and miles of, of no little badges. And then on the outskirts, there's all these badges. So it's like the center of Tennessee is nice and reasonable, and the outside is not. It's weird. No, that's, yeah, that's totally Tennessee. It's basically Memphis and Nashville. Well... Uh, Memphis metropolitan area, Nashville metropolitan area, because it's big. We got donut counties or whatever. Right, right. But outside, yeah, outside of those two cities, it's nothing. It's basically just a bunch of poor, rural Jesus freaks, which, you know, they keep voting Republican, even though they keep screwing them over, which 
does makes no sense to me. Well, it makes sense because they use religion as a cudgel to get them to vote for right. them, and then they use they use that power to fucking defund you know Medicare and you know fuck them out of everything, all their money. So same, you know, that's a whole different whole different episode. But <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, Tennessee is strange like that. Uh, w- at least we have the two cities. Some states. Don't even have that. Uh, Alabama, I don't know. I guess they have some blue areas. Yeah. Um, Montgomery's kind of bluish, and I believe Mobile is a little bluish. But what's weird is I don't have a whole lot in Alabama. Yeah, I don't I don't know what's so special about Tennessee that people feel like they need to display it. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, it. it's weird. Like you said, maybe a fad. I mean, I know some cases in North Carolina that where that took place. There was a guy... Stephen Hewitt, I, I think he, oh, yeah. he's still oh. dealing with that. Yeah, there's a, a group over there called the U.S. Model Action Committee. I've been another one of my nemesi or whatever the <laughs> word may be um, is, is the U.S. Model Action Committee. I mean, they've got – they just in North Carolina, they've got almost 80 counties displaying in Godway Trust. They've got probably 30 – 25 to 30 police and sheriff departments. They've got cities all over the, the state. And, um, you know, th- that's all this guy does. I forgot his name, but that's literally all he does. He goes around to city and county council meetings promoting In God We Trust to them. I-, I-, I wish I could do that. I wish I could. That was my job, to just go around doing that, promoting E. Pluribus Unum at every city and council meeting. Yeah, but you got no funding for that, you know. Exactly. And, you know, being semi-self-funded, it- it's impossible. I mean, yeah, we got a lot of donations for a long time, but... You know, they can only sustain us for so long when when the funding runs out. Yeah, it, it's kind of sad. Well, it is sad, not kind of sad. That re- the religious groups have so much backing that it's hard to out. I mean, they have so much money that they make off these poor ass people mostly, and to yeah. and to promote these sort of these really just pointless endeavors. And a lot of times, the I mean, when the FFRF sues them for anything like this, now it's not specifically in God we trust its other instances which are obviously just you know unconstitutional they'll pay the lawyers fees for right for them to go to court even though they know it's not going to win right so that yeah like the ACLJ and all those those places they always they they just provide the lawyers yeah and it's just all it is it's a fruitless exercise for the most part now i will say that if i recall correctly and God We Trust has been upheld by a federal court. I don't know what the case is. I think there's a specific case. Yeah, uh, it's uh, Arano versus, oh, I cannot believe I forgot that. Holy crap, my brain just died. So it's 1970, uh, Arano versus United States, if I, I believe is the right one. Uh, basically, Stephen Arano sued uh, to having God We Trust removed from the money because he said it infringed on his uh, First Amendment rights of freedom of religion. Um, and it went through the courts and it made it to the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which is a federal appeals court. And while they said he doesn't have standing, they are the only court to have made a ruling of any sort on In God We Trust. And what they said was that um, In God We Trust, due to, uh, oh, what's the word, rote repetition, has become nothing more than ceremonial deism and therefore is not a religious statement. That's fucking weak. That's the weakest they've got. So I, I have an issue with this because now what they've done is they've taken – we got all these people that are putting in God we trust on these things saying it's our religion. Um, you know, we're, we're Christians. We should be able to do this. And I'm sitting there thinking. But the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals said it's only okay if it's ceremonial deism. So are you equating your personal religion to ceremonial deism? Is that the level you want to play at? Yeah. Because that, that that's what you're telling me. Yeah, that makes no sense. It's like in one breath, they're, it's it's hypocritical as fuck. It's what it is. In one bre- oh, yeah. in one breath, they're trying to say, "Well, we can do this because it's ceremonial deism." And the court said they don't. The problem they don't even give a fuck about the court. They probably don't even know about the fucking court decision. I'm well. I'm, some of them may. Uh, the lawyers probably do. I don't know. But the right. the actual people don't even fucking care. You know. I mean, they just well, they don't give a shit. There, there are people that know about a court decision, and they automatically go, the Supreme Court said, and I'm like, no, the Supreme Court never said. Well, we can stop you right there, because you don't know what the hell you're talking about, because it never made a Supreme Court, um, because they refused to hear the case. 
Huh. Go figure. So, yeah, they didn't want to get into it, and honestly, I don't blame them. Um, at least not at the time. 1970 was a very weird time for that. And, you know, no other court has really been able to take that ever since. I mean, like I said, Michael Newdow has tried to take it on a couple times. And he's gotten nowhere because he lacks standing. So it's going to take somebody who is actually affected. Yeah, and that's the problem. Who's affected by a mod? Yeah, but yeah, I don't know how you work through that. Yeah. And it costs a lot of money, and it takes a lot of prep and all that kind of stuff. So, Yeah, I, I knew from the beginning we would never win in court with this. There's no way. Um, it's It doesn't. It doesn't affect people in that way. Uh, the only way to win this is, and this is why I, I decided to go with this direction that we did, was to change the court of public opinion on the motto. And, and that's that's why I do it the way that I do it. Yeah. You know, I, I, I got to say that this is a, an effort that should be more widely. You shouldn't be the only person saying this. Or... You should be, but people need to give you more fucking money and support. <laughs> that would be great. I, I love money, uh, especially if it's been stamped with one of our beautiful stamps. Oh, yeah. You have a stamp. I need to get one of those. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they're, they're, I'm currently out of stock because I'm currently out of money. So, <laughs> Okay. Well, tell me how much it is to make one and I'll buy one. But anyway, uh, yeah. it, I think people don't realize, or at least I don't know if they're even thinking about the fact that Something like a pluribus unum on you, you know, replacing that, uh, I mean, replacing a guy we trust with the pluribus unum maybe seem, seems kind of petty, seems kind of, you know, inane or whatever. But I think it's, a, I personally think it's important because of this creeping deism, well, it's not creeping, it's been there, of the, the, the encroaching of religion upon, you know, our secular society. Right. And that is, you know, it, it depends where you are and what region, I guess. But for the most part, like you said, it's the Southeast. And it really is pretty frightening to see the kind of disregard a lot of these people, governments, uh, organizations have for separation of church and state. Right. And I think that this is kind of a harbinger when you see this kind of shit starting. And that's just the beginning. That's the right. canary in a coal mine. Well, I, and I, I can give you a direct Correlation to that, um, in Texas, about a year and a half ago, a um, sheriff, a, it was a police department, put a Bible quote on their police cars, right? And one of their uh, reasonings was, well, it says, in God we trust on our money, so why can't I do this? Yeah. Like, almost direct almost direct correlation. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of just one of those things where... If you nip it in the, like you said, public opinion, court of public opinion, maybe from there you can kind of, okay, if this isn't uh, acceptable, then why is this acceptable? And kind of move up the, you know, the ladder right. or whatever. Right. Yeah, because the only way we're going to get this changed is literally an act of Congress. <laughs> yeah. Because that's how they changed it the first time. Yeah, that whole fucking thing. And people don't even realize that. They think it's been there the whole fucking time. Oh, you don't, you wouldn't believe how many people are like, our founding father said it. I'm saying, well, which one? Because I know a lot of the stuff they said, and in God We Trust wasn't one of them. No, all they, they mentioned a the creator is what they said. Yeah. It yeah. was deism, so not so much. Uh, I don't know. I don't think people, modern day uh, evangelicals, know what they don't understand that today's, what they consider today's evangelical Christianity was absolutely nothing like what the fuck kind of religions that they even had any back then, which the, they did. Sort of, but well, yeah, a, a couple of our founding fathers could have been considered evangelical, uh, and and the fact that they wanted other people to have the same religion as them, but it wasn't like the the Westboro Baptist Church was that back around then, right? Um, and, and that's about as evangelical as they got, really. You, you, I mean, you had some pretty pious founding fathers, but they knew that from working with England that if you you mix church and state, you've got a huge issue. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of them coming over here. Well, I say that people get kind of confused on some of this stuff. Like the Puritans were not coming here for they came here for the freedom of their religion. <laughs> yeah, to freedom to impose their religion on everybody else. Yeah, because in England they weren't allowed to do that. Yeah. So let's not get confused here. I mean, a lot of the early people, well, not a lot. Some of them. Those I'm sure there was a mixture of reasons. A lot of it was just to make some money off. 
and stuff off, right. off the land. But there are some that came over here for religious freedom, so they have the freedom to impose their religion on somebody else. So, right. so let's not get too confused on that one. But you're right, the founding fathers had... It was Eisenhower in the 50s as a response to communi- godless communism. Is, yeah. That's why they... For the most part. I mean, there, there's a couple differing concepts as to exactly how it happened. I mean, um, uh, Kevin Cruz wrote a, a great book about how uh, corporate mixing with uh, theological ideology was behind the push for in God we trust. And, and it's a pretty good read. And, and I, I think he's pretty close on the mark. But I, I tend to believe that theology had more play in it than he tends to think. But that's, you know, just my opinion. Mm, I have to check that out, too. It's another thing you're going to have to send me a link on or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's, uh, oh, I forgot the name of it. But it's Kevin Cruz. I'll, I'll get the link out to you. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's a daunting task, to say the least, to try to get this yeah. this change, especially especially in a region of the country the southeast where it's just jesus christ to get anything changed around here it's just forget it i mean we're we're still stuck in fucking the, 18, <laughs> the fucking 1800 <laughs> yeah i mean a lot of places are basically still in the 50s or whatever and there oh, yeah. there are still places where uh, you don't go if you're black let's just say that yeah absolutely i mean i know specifically certain places they call it oh. sundown towns which supposedly don't exist anymore let me tell you they <laughs> they do exist yeah, they do. Um, oddly enough, um, that you you can still find some of that up here, but it's very very rare. Um, simply because uh, this far north, you don't get a, a lot of um, non-whites up here. It's weird. I don't know. Yeah, Washington and that Oregon in that area isn't that kind of a breeding ground for some of those like you know white supremacy kind of militia types or whatever. Yeah, um, not not so much the western part, but the eastern part tends to be a little more um, Georgia like. <laughs> Georgia like. Uh, in fact, parts of uh, like Idaho and, and northwest Montana are the home bases of like parts of the KKK. And uh, Richard Spencer uh, is from Whitefish, Montana. Uh-huh, yeah, I remember that story. His mother yeah. still lives up there, and yeah, she caught a bunch of shit. Yeah, they tried to throw her out of town. Which was wrong because she doesn't necessarily have the same views as her son, and she, so I don't think they should be throwing her out of town. So I don't know. Yeah, that, that, that's a different. That's a different issue. Yeah, that's that's not cool. That you're gonna visit the sins of the son on the you know on the on the mother. Okay. Yeah, it's just a kind of clever there the way I did that. Anyway, so yeah, yeah. So <laughs> I like to think so, but yeah, it's just so pervasive. So since you've uh, pretty much stopped doing well, half stopped doing the podcast. Do you see your put self putting more time into the uh, in God We Trust project or whatever? Oh, absolutely. Um, I plan on a, a full uh, 100% uh, restart of it because it's been kind of on a, a back burner for the past few months. Uh, ever since my surgery, everything's been kind of on a back burner. And I haven't brought the original module project 100% back out. I've, you know, done a couple. Uh, small things, but um, yeah, I plan on doing it, bringing it way more in the forefront. Um, since um, that, that's more what I want to do, and, and and I can actually put that persona back on. Yeah. So, what is that going to entail if you're bringing it back full force? Um, uh, you'll see a lot more postings on the Facebook and Twitter feed. You'll you'll see a lot more writing um on the website. Um. We, we may even redo the website. It depends on how I feel about that since I do the website as well. And, um, you know, I, I'm going to be uh, hit, hitting the, the, the ground a lot harder. I'm going to try and do a lot more interviews, uh, let's say like with podcasts and stuff, specifically for the original model project. So whereas before it was sort of like, hey, you do two things. Let's talk about both of those things. Now it's going to be like, hey, this is the thing you do. Let's just talk about that. Yeah. And that's kind of uh, why I wanted to talk to you about it on this show and i'm glad that uh you're restarting that project because while your podcast is excellent and i enjoyed the the yakking between you and amy <laughs> uh, i also think this is really important for the reasons already previously stated and i'm sure right. most of my listeners would pretty much hardly agree with would agree with that sentiment uh so do, do you see yourself getting some help 
uh, with this print? I, I certainly hope so. Um, like I said, I've got a couple people that help me now, but I, I can always use more volunteers. Um, I really w- would like to see some, uh, if, if you want to volunteer, I'm really looking for writers, right? And people on the ground being able to look for this stuff. Because, like I said, I, I work a lot, so it's a little harder for me to put as much time as I really, really want. And my skills at writing are eh, mediocre at best, which is why I had Tom do most of the writing. So I, that's that's really what we're, we're looking for. Is I would love the help. So if one were to write, what would they be writing about? Just out of curiosity. Um, well, we would. So part of the, the new thing is I want to teach people how to argue against any God we trust. And it would be articles r- related to that. So we would say pick a a particular argument that we get in. So l- let's say they want to say, and God we trust has always been there. So we would write an article uh, about how to say, no, it's not, and this is why it hasn't always been there. We can, And, and that's the sort of writing. It's going to be um, that sort of stuff, plus press releases about things we're doing, or you know, this county council has done this, and we want to recap the 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 council meeting that's on in video and so that sort of stuff so sort of sort of a mix of journalism and um education okay well that sounds good and as far as people on the ground what what are you looking for in that i'm I'm looking for people that are willing to go to county council meetings in their area even um you know because i i can't exactly pick up and go to south carolina but it'd be great if i had somebody say in, in in greenville that would be willing to maybe take a trip down to Charleston sometime, you know, something like that. You know, people willing to do the local on the ground work that I just can't do. Yeah. I mean, you're in Washington, so it's kind of, yeah. and yeah, it's, it's really hard for me to get anywhere else. And let's face it. Most of your problems are going to be in this region of the country. Uh, right. Southeast, beautiful scenery, people, not so much. But yeah, well, yeah, I've gone, uh, I've gone to every council meeting that I can get to, that I can afford to get to. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Uh, and you definitely would need some help in that aspect. And as you say, you know, some people down there, you could partner with some organizations down here. I mean, they're absolutely. And of course, I don't need to tell you that, you know, reaching out and having those partners is incredibly helpful when you want to get anything done, uh, in that part of the country in this part of the country. Right. Yeah, in fact, we um we last year we created a Facebook group for every single state, um, which is uh, an e pluribus unum group where people can keep up with their states oh, and yeah. what's going on. Now I remember, yeah, and uh, I need to uh, uh, and just I uh, you probably already thought about this, but just kind of uh, push those out a little, a little bit more, maybe kind of yeah. Get those a little more intention, attention, and you know, let people do the kind of the work for you. Because there's sh- shit. Trust me, there's plenty of shit going around. <laughs> yeah, I know. Popping up ev- around here now. As you said, it, it's kind of slowed down a bit here lately. I haven't heard anything in this area uh, lately, as far as I remember. Uh, I hear most stuff uh, because I, I have Tennessee shit all over the you know social media, so I see most of that stuff. But that's not to say it won't start back up again. Right. Um, I, I think timing had a lot to do with that. Um, I, and now that we've got uh, some theocrats in office and a bunch more on the way, I, I have this feeling it's about to get a lot worse. Um, I, I think what happened was everybody was so euphoric about Trump getting into office, they kind of forgot about in, in God We Trust. You know, I hadn't thought about that. Uh, they're They're kind of concentrating on the bigger stuff now. <laughs> right basically you know kicking brown people out and- <laughs> yeah but uh trump's also doing a lot of um he's bringing a lot of god back into government and he, he's bringing a lot of religious quote freedom back into government and i, I have a feeling there's going to be people who are going to turn around and start focusing on this again uh like u.s model action committee never stopped they just don't have as many that they have to do same thing with the group out in California. They never stopped. They just, they they hit like a plateau. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, they'll start coming out of the woodwork again. And they seem to do it more when there's a, 
a Democrat in Congress or something when there's a Democrat yeah. majority and they feel they're more oppressed. Oh no, we get our freedoms taken away or whatever. Yeah. So they feel like they're more oppressed and they need to do more to demonstrate how what intolerant they are, I guess. I don't know. Right. <laughs> yeah. I also noticed that it runs cyclical with say, um, the, the, bigger win one of the big secular groups has so if american atheist or ffrf has a big huge court win we'll see some in god we trust bumper stickers or county councils pop up yeah that's yeah definitely true i hadn't really thought about any time it gets any kind of intention that is when the fundraising kicks in because you know that's how they get that money exactly they make money off shit like that the get their parishioners or whoever the fucking to drain money out of them so they can use it for their bullshit crusades or whatever, which is really disgusting because most of those people yeah. give money when they don't really even have it. Yeah, that that frustrates me to no end. So hopefully, uh, if you get some of these like these groups in these states, which I would gladly help you with that if if you know you like me to or whatever, since I'm in Tennessee, and there okay. uh, <laughs> there are plenty of groups out here that would be glad to help you. I'm sure uh, I know of a couple off the top of my head. I'm sure you already know of a couple. Like you said, uh, Lita Lindecker out there in East Tennessee. She's a, mm-hmm. she's a fucking dynamo. Uh, yes, she is. So <laughs> she, God, she kills me. I'm like, how do you take all this shit? Cause <laughs> she just doesn't give any fucks. I mean, she will, people buy and her page is public. And yeah. people give her the worst shit. I mean, these religious people. I thought you were supposed to love Jesus. And this is how Jesus was? I, I don't remember that part. Yeah. You know, I, I don't remember the part where you're cussing her and calling her names and hoping she dies and whatever. You know, I, yeah. I don't remember that part. Maybe. It, no, I don't. I didn't read the whole Bible, but I'm pretty sure that wasn't in there. Was in the footnotes? I, I don't remember seeing that. I don't know. Be- I'll check my skeptics annotated Bible. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah, that's pretty funny, actually. <laughs> or awkward children's Bible or what? Oh my God, Horace Gilgamesh, he's so funny. I love that. Um, yeah, he, he's great. Uh, when we did the E Pluribus Unum campaign, he drew a, a Horace Gilgamesh version. That's awesome. Yeah, we we did an E Pluribus Unum selfie campaign. Um, God, what was it? Uh, about two, maybe eighteen months ago. Ben Carson did In God We Trust selfie campaign. And I was like, no, I'm not going to let that slide. So we, we did the Pillar of Zoom selfie campaign. Worked out pretty good. We got a bunch. That's always encouraging when you see the kind yeah. of, you get that kind of response or whatever. Yeah. So as this relaunch, let's kind of summarize what you're going to do. You're going to kind of go back into it full force, right? Right. Yep. Going to hit the ground uh, pretty hard. Um, going to do a lot of promotion uh, as much as I can. You know, going to hit the podcast. I'm going to. I'm going to try and hit some um, more progressive religious podcast circuits as well, if I can. That's going to be tough for me. And, um, you know, we're, we're going to ramp up our social media output and our, our website output. And I'm just going to keep digging and digging until I find those uh, violations. That's a good, you know, I think that's awesome. Uh, I, I- and I'm glad you're kind of doing that. I mean, I know my ass would be fucking frustrated at this point. I know you're frustrated now. But to the point where I'd be like, fuck it, what's the point, you know? <laughs> and uh, some people might might say it's uh, quixo- quixotic, maybe, but, you know. Quixotic. Yeah, it's interesting. People use that term quite a bit. Um, back about five years ago, I had a blog called The Quixotic Humanist. I like that. Okay. Yeah, it was, it was uh, the subtitle was uh, uh, Tilting at Windmills. Okay, we'll see. You came up with it before I did, so. Yeah. It's, it's kind of weird. Um, yeah, I based it off of uh, Don Quixote always going after the windmill. So That's a great book, by the way. People should read it. It is. It is. It's considered the first novel, I think. But anyway, completely different. Uh, yeah. So, okay. So you're going to do this. I, I volunteer any services I can. And I think people, I'm going to d- encourage people to do it, well, all five of my listeners to uh, go out and do it. You know? <laughs> I think it's a, an important thing to do. And I think it's... In this age of Trump, man, we we need something, you know. <laughs> we need some. Everything seems to be going to shit lately, you know. Everything's just one thing after another, and it, I think we need a win, even if it's a small win. I don't know. Right? Yeah, I, I agree. Um, I'm willing to take a, a small win. I mean, because the government's shut down now, you know. So that's important to shut down the government over shit. Yeah. Over, you know. 
brown people, I guess. Yeah. Well, I, I, as I was talking to Amy earlier, and we'll probably talk about it on the show a little bit uh, this week, is the reasoning. One of the reasons they're throwing out for the government shutdown is chip. And they're saying Republicans want to save kids' health care. And I'm like, uh, that's bullshit. If you want to save kids' health care, you should have done it six months ago when it first came up. Yeah. Now they use it for a political chip? No. No, no, that's not right. Oh, no. No, they don't give a shit. And there was a a bill they were trying to pass on the floor of the the house about at least paying the military during the shutdown. Yeah, that, like that's an easy one. That, that's a uh, absolute yes vote, and no, it's not going to happen because they want to use the military as a, a political chip. That's what they always do. McConnell didn't even allow it come to the floor. So right, yeah, it's uh, they're using it as, as a stick against the Democrats. And they always have done that, and that always infuriates me. Anybody who's actually been in the military, or has been in a military family, or anything, knows that they are treated like shit for the most part. You know, oh, yeah. and the veterans especially, and to use them as a ch- and you know kind of a oh be patriotic you gotta support the fucking troops oh really you mean like by not funding them and underpaying them and not giving them the you know don't get me started in the whole fucking thing yeah and then cut uh, VA benefits and make it harder for the VA to do their job yeah yeah that's great support yeah so again uh, <laughs> it's a totally different thing but <laughs> don't get me on politics no, yeah i'll go all night and so uh so that's why i gotta stop uh so yeah i, I encourage anybody who can to volunteer with uh original model project and any way you can or if you just want to report some shit that's going on in your hometown or nearby environs uh give them a call or well not call but email well, well we, we do have a voicemail line somewhere i don't know the exact number but we do have one i'm gonna need you to come out if you're gonna go full force man you need to go have this stuff at the ready so i'm gonna need you to- i know i know <laughs> i want to need you to i know <laughs> but sir yeah whenever you get the information just let me know i'll, I'll make sure to get it out to all my my posse or whatever yeah so. well you can always contact us yeah. on, on the website yeah that's always available yeah go to this website you got a facebook page as well uh, I think that's probably the main ways they probably could get a hold of you. I would imagine. Yeah. Um. Yeah. I'm pretty social, so uh, you can you can get us at the the webpage originalmodel dot us. Um. At Facebook, I made it really easy. It's uh, original motto. Uh, Twitter original underscore motto. You know, I I try to make things easy. Yeah, we're gonna play. I'm gonna play that the the, the ad with the the dude that sounds like. Oh my god. Travis. So that's a, a good friend of mine, Travis Simmons. I'm going to plug him right now. It's called The Big Funny. Go check his shit out. He's hilarious. Yeah, that voice is great. I love that. Oh, yeah. I said, can you do James Earl? He's like, yeah. I was like, yes. It was, uh, yeah, it's great. So I'll play, of course, during the, for the show, I'll be playing that, uh, the, the ad or whatever. So, okay. I, uh, I give you kudos just for getting that. That's a pretty badass ad, I got to say. Yeah. Travis is one of my favorite people. Um, and, and a side note for him, you ever want to learn anything about Robert Green Ingersoll? He's the guy. Oh, yeah. And probably a brief mention of of that. Of course, we probably did before, but who gives a fuck? Robert Green Ingersoll quotes y'all used to do at the beginning or are, are going to not be doing anymore since the show's no longer going to be aired, whatever. But yeah. uh, the, the Ingersoll quotes, I encourage anybody to actually go read up on him anyway. Yeah. And I actually have his works on ebooks somewhere but i just got some uh, the, shit to read oh my god it's uh seventeen thousand pages long yeah i don't have it. Uh, whoa it's the uh complete works 12 volume edition Dres- dresden uh, that's what i have oh lord okay yeah I, yeah <laughs> i'll have to work my way up to that but the quotes for now are good they're plenty of good quotes uh go listen to their old old shows you can f- hear the quotes they use at the beginning of their shows so i encourage y'all to go check that out and even if, you know, even if the podcast is no longer there, go check out the original model project and he'll probably be popping up another podcast, promote it. Right. I imagine. Right. So. Yep. Uh, probably starting in the next uh, few weeks to a month. We'll see how it goes. All right. Well, um, thanks for coming on. Uh, well, thanks for having me. And why don't you go ahead and plug your stuff? You already plugged most of it, but go ahead and, you know, do it again. All right. So, uh, original uh, uh, Facebook is original motto. Twitter is original underscore motto. Uh, you can email us at e pluribus unum at original motto dot us. And you can follow my personal Twitter feed at the motto guy. So there you go. 
I personally want to thank you for being a patron of the show, which I didn't mention before. Uh, oh, well, I like the show. So I really do appreciate that. And I want to thank you for doing the show as long as you have. It's uh, seriously, it's a, it was been a, it was been a great ride. It's, it was a great show. And, uh, I appreciate y'all putting that out. I know what kind of time it takes and you're working like 3000 hours a week or the fuck it is. <laughs> so I think that I speak for a lot of people who have enjoyed your show that we want to thank you for putting it out there. Well, well thank you. That, that makes me feel great. So it really does. All right, man. Well, good luck with your new uh, endeavor. Well, it's not new, but your re reinvigorated invigorated. It's not a word. Reinvigorated endeavor, and uh, I'm sure we'll hear more, a lot more from you. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, take care of yourself, Rob. All right, you too. That'll do for this episode of the Podunk Polymath Podcast. I want to thank Rob Ray for coming on and talking to me about the original po- motto project and sadly the demise of secular yakking. But like I said, he's soldiering on and reinvigorating the original motto project. So if you all want to volunteer uh, and you, or you want to contact for any reason, of course, like you said, you can go to the original motto.us. Contact me and contact him on that page, or you can go to their Facebook page, the Original Model Project. Well, the page is called a Plurimus Unum, Unum hyphen the Original Model Project for some reason. But anyway, find him on Facebook or uh, the page. He doesn't, he say have a call number, but you know, he hasn't found it. So he needs to find it. I told him that shit. And if you can volunteer, uh, whether by writing or by volunteering, being foot on the feet on the ground or whatever, looking at shit, going to council meetings or whatever, putting people's feet to the fire, as it were, give him a give him a shout out, give him a call, whatever. So and listen to him, listen for him on other podcasts, which I'm sure y'all listen to. Of course, if you want to check out the show, you can come to poduckpolymath.com. The music, of course, is done by dot dot dash. You can find their music on cdbaby.com slash cd slash dot dot dash. The logo, new and improved by Jeff Prebig Jr. on Twitter at Pit Atheist. I hate him even though, well, no, I don't hate him. He's a good guy besides the fact he's a fucking Pens fan. They cheated. But anyway, you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Google Plus at the Podunk Polymath. Email at podunk.polymath at gmail.com. If you want to become part of the Patreon posse, patreon.com slash the Podunk Polymath. Call in phone number 615-378-POPO-7676. Join the Podunk Polymath Podcast Posse Facebook group at facebookgroup.com slash groups slash the period podunk period polymath period podcast period posse. Mouthful. The Podunk Polymath Podcast online store is at sazlock.com slash podunk underscore polymath. Of course, if you look on the sidebar there, you'll see you can follow the page on WordPress you can also see my tweets and become a Twitter follower there as well. There's a donate button for PayPal. You can subscribe on RSS, Google Play, iTunes, and Stitcher. Become a member of the Patreon posse with a button there. You can like the Facebook page from the little box there and see maybe a couple people who like it already. There's a recent post also in recent comments. Again, I want to thank you all for listening to the show. Hopefully you gain some some knowledge from it, I hope. I, who knows? Who knows anymore? But I think some of the stuff we got from Rob was definitely something that you can work with, something that you can volunteer for him with. I think it, it's a great idea. I think it's a something that we can really put our minds behind and make it a, a great project. So anyway, until next time, uh, y'all take it easy now, okay? Okay.